Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop, Charlton, Massachusetts. Welcome back. Thanks for all the support we've been getting. We did uh, a rust video when it went to the moon. A lot of new people are coming in. So I thought we'd revisit a little bit about the English wheel and we'll try to make it as interesting as possible. We're going to break it down into little bite-sized pieces. So this is the uh, what I call the YouTube English wheel. We did a bunch of videos on how we made this and everything. And uh, we designed this uh, about uh, two years ago, I guess. It might have been three years ago. And this is what I call the Silver Edition. We'll go over all the features of it and show you uh, the potential of an English wheel. So my idea is to inspire you and to take the challenge and, and jump into the waters. You might have a lot of doubts that you can't do it, but uh, consistently I, I train people that have zero experience and we get stuff like this. All right, so this is a, a VW go-kart that uh, Jason, one of my students, local students coming in and he just went crazy on it. He co I couldn't stop him and he wants to finish the whole thing he had zero experience so that's i wanted to just feature that for a few seconds here to show you what's possible if you can do that there's nothing you can't do any car can be built the english wheel has been sitting around a little bit there might have been some students using it the wheels get dirty you have to address the wheels always meaning your wheels want to be in super clean condition polished because the wheel polishes the metal as it or prints on the metal it's polished as you're working it so i've shown this in earlier videos i have like 258 videos but a lot of people don't go into the to the backlog of videos so i'm going to show this again it's a really neat little trick so what we do is we take a cordless drill and we have a drum sander on it this is uh just a, some rubber uh, that makes it for a uh, three inch drum sander. You can get it at McMaster Car. That's McMaster.com. And they deliver anywhere in the US, maybe even outside the US. I, I think they might even do Canada, I'm not sure. And then this is a Harbor Freight little grinder with our little adapter on it and a foam pad. And it's just an awesome little tool. And we'll back this off a little bit this way here. We've got a little clearance on it. Now I got a 1200 grit, I, 400, 600, I go to 1200. These are pretty uh, polished already, they're just a little dirty. So this spins it, it's a one man operation. Don't try to stop it with your hand. You can get sucked into it. It's a little dangerous. So, um, As you clean it, a lot of black scum builds up here. It's a little oxide and stuff. You can. This is um, hook and loop paper. I get it from McMaster Car. And the neat thing about it is you can wash it. All right, so I got a little uh, lacquer thinner on the paper towel. And then you can wash this 1200 paper off really nice to get that black scum off of there. And uh, if you don't take it off, uh, you get these little blobs of black scum, which you'll have to wash off with lacquer thinner on the wheel. So now we're clean again. And now let's do the bottom wheel. That's nice and clean. We'll just give it a little lacquer thinner if there's any black stuff on there. Yeah, there's a little bit right there. This is our lowest crown wheel. I was gonna put that in there first actually. So we'll take this one out and we'll put that lowest crown one in. We'll clean that one too.
So let's just t talk a little bit about the frame and what, uh, what is good in the frame and what is not good in the frame. So uh, I've designed probably about 10 different English wheels now. Each one I do gets a little bit better. This one has an artistic element to it, but it's also very strong. It's, uh, it has quarter inch wall. It's four inches by four inches. And that's a very common material. And it features a lot of small little pieces you can buy these small pieces inexpensively because uh, the, the people, the steel places that sell stuff like this tubing, oftentimes somebody comes in and they want 18 feet and it's a 24 foot uh, piece of tubing that it starts out as, or 40 foot. And they might end up with a bunch of little pieces and little pieces aren't that desirable. They call them drops and you can often get these drops a little bit cheaper. Sometimes uh, somebody orders a whole bunch of this tubing for a job. They don't use it all. It sits in the backyard somewhere on some two by fours. It gets rusted up. It's not gonna hurt the, uh, the, the wheel at all. If you make it out of that, you just have to sandblast it or something before you paint it if you want. Uh, or you, know, you can sand it with uh, paper, sandpaper and paint right over after you get it cleaned up a little bit. So steel prices have been going up quite a bit, but you can make this frame pretty inexpensively. All right, so this frame has a really good sized throat. So we'll measure that. And it's about a 35 and a half inch throat. Now, if you double that, that allows you to do a panel this wide, which is bigger than anything in the automotive world, pretty much. So that throat uh, distance is, is more than adequate. And it, the footprint is relatively small. It's got uh, a, a tripod set up here, so it's always balanced no matter how the floor is off level. We put a little rubber on there so it isolates it uh, really nice. It makes it so it doesn't, it doesn't move. It's really stable. You can barely move it. That's why we put a, a lifting hook on it. And your standard engine crane will, if you have a, uh, an engine crane, you can lift it up with that. We have a fork truck, we have engine cranes, we can move it around really easy. The adjuster and everything on this one bolts on. A lot of them are welded on. So um, that's a nice feature. Uh, it allows you to dial in everything. So if you buy a machine that's all totally welded, it's very difficult. And when I say dial everything in, that means you want to have these wheels touching right dead in the middle of the top wheel. You can shim these, you could shim it any which way you wanted to if the frame was off a little bit. That uh, is going to make uh, life a lot easier having that ability. Also we design the yokes here and build the yokes um, and we always have all our machines so you can turn the yokes 360 degrees. Where does that come into play? Well Say you have a really long piece that wouldn't fit in that 36 inch throat, you can turn them and you can run it this way. You can turn the wheel and run it this way if you want. All right, when we're talking about the frame, we want it to be strong. And a lot of people are under the impression that uh, a cast frame is probably the strongest frame there is. But actually uh, you can make a, a, a steel fabricated frame and if you did all the testing on it, you'll find that that steel frame is actually will yield a better performance than the cast iron one will. Uh, the cast iron frames are, have their own nice little feature about them. One is a lot of them have the axle and that has uh, a lot of utility. Uh, you don't absolutely have to have it, but it adds another feature that our wheels, uh, this wheel doesn't have on it. So the frame on an English wheel uh, is going to have movement no matter what you make it out of. Uh, this I tried to limit it as much as possible. I've got all this triangulation. Uh, the weakest point on this frame is right here and that allows a little bit of movement on it because you don't want the frame to be too strong. Uh, on the, this is the silver edition. We make a gold edition wheel. All right, this is our gold edition wheel. And in this one, we put a little triangular piece right in that little spot so it makes the backbone a little stronger even. And you could do that on the silver edition if you wanted to. The reason why we did that is we put really large wheels on. I'm going to talk about the large wheels in a minute. The frame will have multiple movements. One, it's a C, so 
the C is going to open up like this. That's the spring in the frame. If you made this out of like two inch thick solid plate, you would limit that movement. And what would happen is when you're English wheeling, you're going to thin out areas in the center of the panel. That's where the panel is going to rise up. And you're not going to be working on the edge of the panel as much. So there might be, you know, four or ten, as much as ten thousandths of an inch difference in thickness between the center and the edge. And when that happens, your adjustment goes out the window because uh, with, a, with a super strong frame, it wouldn't allow you to traverse those different thicknesses because it, it would stall because the frame would not give. Now, that one you definitely need a little bit of elasticity in your frame, but you don't want too much that will cause elasticity in this rotational way here. This arm and this arm rotate. So uh, that will cause uh, the wheels to misalign. And then also the arms can go like this, and you don't want that to happen either. So if you make your frame strong enough, you limit this, you limit that, but this it has to have some uh, movement into it. So we covered the frame. Now we want to talk a little bit about the adjuster. We make these adjusters in-house here. They have a really nice bronze bushing in here. And it's about a three-inch shaft that's going up and down here and captured by that bronze bushing. That bronze bushing is adjustable. It has a slot in it and we can tighten that bronze bushing up. This thing would last probably about a millennium, a thousand years. It's a really nice design uh, adjuster. And compared to some of the ones you get out of China and stuff, they're just a tube inside a tube and they got a couple bolts on them and stuff. They're just horrible. And it's very important to have a good adjuster. It's very uh, significant in the results of the machine. We've got a nice, uh, easy to use hand wheel here and uh, works nice and free as you can see backing it up and the motion we have about an inch and a half of motion that's all we need so when you change the wheel out all you got to do is loosen it up so it's not engaged anymore and you just pull the pin out slide the wheel out so you don't have to back it off all the way and you put the pin in now i think i mentioned earlier that because of all the adjustment potential because these are all bolt it on, every time you use your English wheel, you should check to make sure that it's hitting in the center of the top wheel here. This is a top adjuster wheel versus a lot of them, I'd say probably the majority have kick adjusters. And a lot of people think that the kick adjuster, which you see the most, is the way to go. And for me, it never worked out. I'm just not comfortable adjusting with my foot like that. This, I can actually work this on the fly, work it like this. I've got enough, enough stability to work with one hand and tighten with one hand if I want to. And I don't feature quick releases also because you don't really need them. You can get into a panel just by, you don't go straight into the panel. You go in at a 45 degree angle like this and it'll just let you right in. I call that the entrance ramp to the freeway by going in on the 45 degree angle. So the adjuster being on the top, I think is user friendly and more user friendly than kicking it with your foot. And the first wheel I made was a top adjuster wheel, but I designed it so it had a tube coming all the way up. And every single panel that I made, the panel would come down like this and would hit that tube always and, and it just drive me crazy. Now this one, it has uh, clearance underneath the bottom anvil, but it's probably about 16 inches or 18 inches here. Um, you can, you can uh, modify that a little bit if you wanted to, but that's adequate, that'll work. And where that comes into play is when you work a panel out of arrangement, they go into a curl arrangement and it'll come down like this and you have to go underneath that lower anvil. And then that, having that clearance under here makes a big difference. So you'll notice that a lot of my wheels, if not all of them, have wider top wheels. The, the Kraft Standard is uh, three inch wide top wheels. 
and usually they're larger diameter. They can be uh, eight inches, nine inches, ten inches in diameter. And these are, I think, six and a half and I think four and a quarter or something wide. And the reason for that is it, it makes it, I call it almost like idiot proof because uh, the issue is when you're wheeling a panel, when you have a narrow wheel, now a lot of people have bought the Harbor Freight wheels which are two inch wide. If you go off, if you go off horizontal just one degree like that, the wheel will bite in on the edge. No matter how much you round it, the wheel will bite and you'll get a scar right across the panel. And I, I discovered that uh, very early in my uh, career when I started English wheeling. And I said, there has to be a better way. So I started experimenting with wider wheels. And once I made my first wider wheel wheel, uh, that was the it. I, I would never go back to narrow wheels. Now, there are sometimes narrow wheels come into play, but uh, my wheels, you can easily change them. You just pull the pin and you put, put a narrow wheel in if you want to. So that uh, is uh, really significant. Once you try a, a, a wide top wheel, and also you'll notice my wheels are a smaller diameter. That comes into play when you're doing uh, reverse curves, a smaller diameter top wheel allows you to traverse into reverse curves. In fact, I've got another wheel that got set up over here. See, this is a really small top wheel and that works really good on reverse curves. So now another issue is people always ask, well, what about a rubber band? Where do you put the rubber band? Well, I don't use a rubber band. If I want to use a rubber top wheel, I have these, I have a, a, a couple of these, one dead flat, this one has actually a little concave in it. Pull the pin, put this rubber wheel in there, and you have to put uh, a couple collars on the shaft to hold it in the center. And now I have a rubber top wheel, but I generally don't use it, but if I have that option always. Why would you use the rubber wheel or the rubber band? What they want to do is make a single curvature panel. So, uh, for instance, like a 1930s hood, they have a single curvature to them. It's not a double curvature. So, a lot of people will say, okay, I need a real high crown wheel like this to make that curve. And they'll take the, the new hood that they're making out of aluminum or steel, and they'll run it back and forth. The problem is this is going to... Uh, actually increase the area or stretch the panel where they're wheeling it and that will cause crown to happen and generally you don't want crown it's a single curvature panel so that's why people put the uh, rubber band on here and generally they do create a little bit of crown but it's acceptable I like the rubber wheel instead of the rubber band a lot better and uh, I've used this to actually make, I have like three or four of these. I haven't used it lately, but I used to make uh, a lot of Jaguar pots. And if I needed to make a really tight radius, I'd, I'd go up on the wheels. I'd start with one that's flat, a little more concave, and keep changing them out. And you can put a terrific little uh, radius in it. In fact, what I use now mostly is this setup over here. So there's my rubber wheel here in a, in a, a plastic, oh, this is a rubber one too. So I can do radiuses on this really easy. So I got this set up as a special special setup, but you could do all that on the the uh, silver edition wheel, but you'd have to make a lot of adaptions to get it to work just right. All right, in this machine here, we feature four wheels and uh, four anvil, lower anvils. And uh, we sell all these components. They're on our website, proshaper.com. And uh, a lot of people are mystified by which anvil to use for the operation. Well, let's start with a real world situation. So here we have, this is a brand new, uh, new old stock Alfa Romeo Duetto Fender that's had a piece cut off of it. But there's still a lot of good stuff. A lot of times they'll rot down here. So real world situation, say that it's rotted right here and everything else is pretty good and you want to make this panel right here. So let me get a straight edge. 
And this is one of the most important tools that you'll use is just a straight edge. It's a 24 inch stainless ruler. It just uh, does everything that you need to do to do an analysis. So we, we, I don't know what this surface is like. I know it's got a radius this way. You can see it's rocking like crazy. So I call that a radius value right there. So um, that's not a necessarily a true radius. I have a set of sweeps, which are profile gauges that have these true radiuses. And I doubt very much I'll find one that fits on there perfectly because the value is a little stronger, I think, down here. Now we'll go this way. And look at that, it's dead flat. Now we come down to here. There's a little bit of crown on it right there. Up here, no crown, no crown, no crown, no crown. Nope, oh, now all of a sudden we got crown. So these are the mysteries of uh, panels. Now for some reason, when they designed this, they made the die. They decided that there was enough strength in the panel right here to be flat. Over here, from here down, it needed a little crown. And it has a flange. The flange always gives the, the strength to the panel. Without the flange, it's kind of flippy floppy all over the place. And then we have a flange here. And uh, I don't know, there's no bolting potential there. So I don't know how that works. Um, there might be a piece missing here or something. I'm not sure. But they've got a flange here and it's missing here. It might have been welded there. Maybe it's welded on. I don't know. If we're going to make this panel, we would make a set of gauges. And I make the gauges out of cardboard. And I would make a couple gauges going this way and a couple gauges going this way. And that would give us uh, what I call the arrangement value. And um, we'd do a flexible shape pattern. If you're going to go back into my uh, video library, you'll find one on a flexible shape pattern. We're not gonna cover that tonight. But a flexible shape pattern will actually give you all the perimeter value and it'll pick up any area value change here. Now this area value, meaning how much it's stretched, the area means stretched or shrunk. There's very little area value change here. So this has to be picked up with gauges mostly. But you would want to make uh, a flexible shape pattern because that'll define exactly where you need to uh, put that area. You don't need any area here. You just need this roll in here. So say we had this piece of metal, which we would first cut. And let's just do a, a quick overview of which wheel we would use. We want to use the wheel with a low crown wheel because that's a super low crown panel. If it was a high crown panel, a lot of people will jump ahead and say, well, geez, I need a high crown wheel for a high crown panel. That's not true. You start out with a low crown and you work your way up. So I mentioned a flexible shape pattern. This is a flexible shape pattern. And these are all the gauges that go to making this one little panel here. So make them out of cardboard. We use these uh, cordless scissors to cut the cardboard. We sand them in. And this was captured off a fender just like this. So I said, we would make the flexible shape pattern. That defines all the perimeter and stuff. Of course, this is a different shape entirely. So it would look something like this. And that would be our panel. And down here, in this zone here, there's a little bit of crown. But as you can see, it's only rocking. Oh little less than an eighth of an inch right down in here so like 330 seconds or so and this is kind of flat but we need this we need a gauge made a profile gauge to show that curve we don't have time to do that right now so i'm just going to simulate it and i'll just show you that you don't really need a rubber wheel to make that curve now a lot of people would think to make that curve, you want to wheel this way with a higher crown wheel, and that'll curve it this way. That's not the way it's done. You can do it that way, but it's going to make a lot of wheel marks in it, and it'll make too much crown in the panel. What you want to do is you, you don't want any crown up in here, so the pressure is going to be pretty light. We're going to give it a little more here, 
and we're going to be wheeling down the, the, the bottom part of this panel. As I pull towards me, I got a little pressure on here. I'm going to pull down on, on the panel like this. And that creates the curve we want. It's very simple. Now say you, and we got a really low crown pan, uh, anvil in there. Say you went too far. All you got to do to reverse the process is just lift up on it instead of pulling down. It's really easy. So normally I would have this all trimmed out now. And again, we don't have time to do that. So. We're just going to put that curve in there and a little bit, a little bit of uh, wheeling and squeezing that panel, which will give it a little crown. So we'll take that ruler and we'll put that across there and let's see if we get any crown at all. Now you see that? It's rocking already there. So we got a little bit of crown. Now the idea is to get most of your wheeling here in the center. Typically uh, a panel is wheeled with what's called a tracking pattern and that's being very meticulous about where you're running the wheel. Uh, you can work like that and that's really a really good way to do it but I generally can read a panel as I'm working it and I kind of just go where I need to go. So. In a low crown anvil, it's not going to make anything dramatic. If you see any mark on the panel as you're wheeling it, there shouldn't be any mark. Anything uh, should happen is this, in, this top wheel will start to polish. This isn't going to get polished because we don't have enough pressure on it. Uh, it's just going to uh, create the shape we want and the arrangement that we want. So let's see what we got right there. Let's see if we got enough curve to it. Our goal was to create this radius value going this way and you can see just that few minutes we've created that radius value and uh, our goal also was to create a little area value or stretch and we've got a little bit of stretch down here you can see that's rocking just like the other panel is here with, with dead flat so at this point we're almost done with that panel. It's like a three minute panel to make this panel. And then that's only this. Now we've got to add the details. And the details would be dictated by we need a perimeter measurement. And that's why the flexible shape pattern is it's so important to get a really accurate cut on your flexible shape pattern. And you can't do it all the time with a paper pattern, if, especially if there's more uh, area change and it's got a big hump there or whatever, it, the paper won't settle in right, but the, the flexible shape pattern will settle right in and you'll get a really good perimeter value. And that perimeter value will tell you exactly where you have to tip these edges. Now you tip the edges with a, a, what I call my tipping wheel. You can do it with a, a bead roller, an inexpensive bead roller. They, you can make or buy a, a tipping wheel set up and you can tip this all, all on there. And the tipping wheel, I've got some tipping wheel videos, just give you a shot of what a tipping wheel looks like. Here's our tipping wheel set up here. And you just put it through here. This is just a, a fulcrum and a lever. This is the fulcrum. The lever is you pushing up on the panel and that will induce that uh, flange value that you're looking for. So typically on a patch panel such as this, it would be rotted right down in here. This is where the mud would accumulate. It would rot down here. And this pot might be pretty good. And we have a nice strong feature line right here. That'll hold the panel from going uh, crazy on you. So you can cut that. It's a good idea to cut that at least an inch away right here. So you would make that panel from here to here. The flexible shape pattern can also help you align the new panel. So um, it'll, it'll, uh, you can add a piece to the flexible shape pattern incorporating say up here so that when you put the new panel in, which first you cut this here, you overlap the new panel and you have the flexible shape pattern indexing on all this and it would tell you exactly where you are so you're not 
pivoted one way or another, up or down, is super important, otherwise it's not going to fit right. So you cut it right here, and then you'd end up splicing it together right there. You do a butt weld, and uh, then that is easy to work. You can do a, a hammer and dolly, or a slapper and dolly, or a planishing hammer on that weld right there. And that, that uh, patch will go in there really nicely. So that's a real world example, and that'll help anybody out there that's uh, you know, wondering why they need an English wheel. You can make these panels effortlessly. You just gotta follow the rule structure. So a nice English wheel helps you do the job well. We make this English wheel, we design them here, but we sell them as a plan. Here's the plans. These are full scale plans. You'll find them on our website. And this is the basic plan. The deluxe plan includes uh, these nice pro shape of logos and also all the other plans for the legs and for the, uh, the bolt pattern in here and uh, the, the lifting ring. And no, the lifting ring's on. No, the lifting ring is in the uh, deluxe one. So you get like seven more drawings that will help you do all the uh, ancillary details of the English wheel. All right, so what we did here was, is a very real world example of a low crown panel. This is a super low crown panel. And you can see it can be made in minutes. Uh, we don't have time tonight, but a lot of people wonder, well, how do you make a high crown panel? Now, let's look at this fender. We'll see if it has any high crowns on it. This one really doesn't have any high crowns either on it. These, it's got strong radiuses, but let's get a longer straight edge here and we'll see what that says. All right, so I got a long straight edge here and now we put this on the top of the fender and you can see here we have about uh, an inch and half, inch and three eighths or so of rock this way. So that tells me that there's a lot of area change, a lot of uh, stretch in this panel here. That uh, would not be shrunk at all. That could be all uh, stretch formed. So we could make that panel all, and, and a lot of people will look at that and they'll go, oh, wait a minute, I'm gonna need an English wheel like this, a roller, like this higher crown roller, in order to make this. But this is the, the mystery of the English wheel, see? They'll say, okay, I'll put that like that. Look at that, it'll fit in there. I can make that uh, panel with this anvil. I would never, ever use this anvil to make this panel. What would I use for the anvil? Guess what? I would use this super low crown anvil to make that panel. And maybe it, what would happen if this proved to not have enough crown in it, then I would go one up and I would go to this one here, which has just a slight crown in it. Now, how do you do that? Well, that's what we're gonna show in a follow-up video, how to make higher crown, video, uh, higher crown uh, panels. This isn't really a high crown panel, it's still a low crown panel, but this can be made with that anvil there. And it's done by working the panel out of arrangement. So we could make that whole panel in one piece. It'd be this long and about that wide. And we'd wheel it and wheel it until we had the right crown value. And how would we determine we had the right crown value? With the flexible shape pattern. The flexible shape pattern would tell us exactly how much crown we needed into it. The panel would look like, it would look like this, come back over this way a little bit like that. It'll go through that anvil, no problem. It, you know, and then what we do is we change the arrangement and it would pop into exactly what you see here. And then there's all these adding details. There's a gutter here. All that be secondary added details operations. So that'll be in the next video. Keep an eye out for that. We'll see if we can do it uh, maybe next week or later this week if we got time. Thanks for all the support we've been getting, but remember, we still need more subscribers. Please subscribe, like, and share. Give us the comments. And remember, it's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts, and metal is clay.